During humanity's many different conflicts, they were going to deploy a vast array of soldiers for many different military tasks. Marines were at the forefront of most of the boots on the ground battles, taking on rebel forces of the insurrectionists, and eventually when the Covenant would start to invade the lesser forces of them. Whilst extremely fierce in combat as they had the backing of humanity's long history of military training experience and new technological resources, these soldiers would become just pawns compared to the new super soldiers of the Spartans, made originally to fight back against the insurrectionists, but now used to hit back against the elite troops of the Covenant and be a turning point for humanity in that war. With their modified bodies, incredible armor, and heightened senses, it would be clear that these soldiers would be the best of the best, and without them, humanity might have fallen completely. Although the Spartans took the mantle as humanity's one true hope of survival, another group of soldiers were also some of the best warriors on the field, who would head the tactical operations and go where many of the other marines would not. These troops would plummet into the earth of the location required in the heart of the battle or behind enemy lines to seek information or to once again turn the tide of the battle and to a lot of marines these soldiers would be idolized as some of the bravest within the UNSC. These troopers would become known as the hill jumpers, the orbital drop shock troopers and would be one of humanity's finest assets during the human covenant war. But who are the troopers? How are they trained? What makes them so different and why are they not talked as much about now humanity has entered the year of 2560? Well in today's video we explore the fearless soldiers that would plunge into hell itself. This is the law behind the orbital drop shock troopers. These are the ODST. The idea behind the ODST isn't a new one and in fact dates back to the early 20th century where paratroopers were first introduced to battlefields to dive behind enemy forces lines and were trained heavily to secure VIPs or pieces of intel for their larger forces attacking the main lines. Whilst at first these troopers were a risky idea and many were sure they were not going to catch on, eventually they proved to be a vital asset to a modern era of warfare and throughout the rest of the 20th and 21st century, humanity was use paratroopers as one of their main forces in every battle they ventured into. Going into the 22nd century, more significantly 2129, the United Nations created the first iteration of the ODST as humanity had now started venturing out more into space. These first ODSTs, however, were labelled as just simply drop jet platoons. This iteration of the troopers stayed for a good while until the year of 2163 where a new formation of humanity's military forces came together. This year saw the formation of the UNSC Marine Corps, bringing together all of Earth's national military forces into one army. But this formation caused problems throughout the rest of the Sol system. Here two significant factions rose up and tried to fight back against this new Earth military of the UNSC. These being the communist Kozlovic rebels and the neo-Nazi Freudens. With fights happening between all of these factions, this would see the UNSC Marines first ever extraterrestrial deployment on Mars in what would be labelled as the Mars campaign during the interplanetary wars. The Kozlovich were the main driving force within this conflict as they tried to take control of the plentiful corporate production facilities on the planet. With this new force of the UNSC Marines, which included the ODST, Earth's forces were sent in their masses to take back what had been stolen, and with that, the UNSC were able to overthrow the rebels and secure Mars once again. By 2170, the interplanetary war between all of the factions was now over. The Kalis the Kalisto Treaty was signed not long after this, as humanity went back to focusing on their population back at home and within the rest of the Sol system. But after this war, it became evident that humanity was suffering a new problem. Overpopulation was happening all over, and on top of that, famine was taking a hold, with no one able to fix this situation. Because of this new problem, humanity now had a massive military that was ultimately useless and could not serve them the way they had envisioned. The ODST, for example, were completely sidelined 
during this time as the focus became more on politics and fixing humanity's population issues. Centuries passed as humanity kept trying to fix their solutions and branch out across the Milky Way galaxy. Here they went on to set up hundreds of colonies within the galaxy. The inner colonies being the first were set up with some of humanity's best and brightest individuals and the outer colonies seemingly been set up with colonists who were from dubious backgrounds who tended to despise the governments of Earth. Because of these huge differences in ideologies and reluctance from the outer colonies to cooperate with the UEG, tension got worse throughout the end of the 25th century and after the event within Far Harbor which saw an outer colony get bombed and covered up, rebel forces started to appear, naming themselves as the insurrectionists. With tension mounting and conflicts happening throughout the colonies, the ODST re-emerged to help solve these issues for the UEG and the UNSC. Prior to this event, however, the UEG using the Office of Naval Intelligence set up a project labeled the Orion Program to create biologically augmented soldiers who use new training methods and breakthrough biochemical developments. Whilst these experiments did see big changes in terms of intelligence and enhanced body movements, the project was eventually shut down in 2325. But with the insurrection raising its head, the UEG launched phase two of this project and along with that used the Orion program as a way to promote exemplary models for the newly reinstated ODST Marines who went into training. These drop shot troopers now entering the field would receive months of intense training which would most of the time go on top of the previous training they had experienced before as a standard Marine or whatever role they were before that. This training would certainly not be for the faint of heart as these volunteer candidates would have to endure daily runs, push-ups, numerous obstacle courses as well as training within different simulators, moving through slush, artificial snow and even in live fire simulated battles. But on top of that they would also have to crawl for miles through environments with barbed wire, rubble as well as destroyed buildings, all whilst their drill instructors would fire live rounds inches above their head. But one of the most important training exercises would be where the candidate had to jump from an extremely high height to prepare them for their eventual transorbital drop when in a real situation. Training didn't even stop there. Squad tactics would then be next on the agenda where squads would have to work as a team. This was a priority. If a member of this squad is being slow holding up the rest of the team they will be punished as the drill instructor will shoot them in the leg with a tactical training round, paralyzing them in the leg and if they still can't pick up speed will be shot in the other leg and forced to crawl for the rest of the exercise. The ultimate goal after all of this training would be to get the troopers fire team to reach the top of the mountain in their training with each member providing support and suppression against their opponents. If they were able to reach the top and prove themselves in all of these scenarios these troopers would officially become some of the most adapted tactically minded soldiers in all of the UNSC and they would officially be an ODST member. However many would bail out of these training exercises as they were extremely brutal and only the best could be a part of this unique force. With each member having a unique role within their squadron to make them stand out within battle. Thanks to the UNSC using the Orion Project troops as models, they now had an extremely fierce squad of ODST soldiers ready and waiting to take on anything in their way. And by 2525, the insurrection was now in full swing, meaning the ODST could finally be deployed once again. The ODST were fundamental during this war and helped conduct high risk operations against the insurrectionists, plunging into war behind enemy lines and straight into the heart of some battles. Some of the most significant events within the insurrection war started on the planet of Jericho 7 in the year 2525. Fighting for their freedom away from the UEG, the insurrectionists here would face the full force of the newly made Spartan 2 soldiers, as well as the 10th Shock Troops Battalion of the ODSTs. This battle was fierce as it went on for over 131 days, as the UNSC really showed how powerful their forces were. Soon after this battle, however, the ODSTs were sent to the planet of Arcadia as insurgent activity started to rise within the jungles of the planet. The 10th Shock Troops Battalion were deployed as they wiped out the rebel movement in swift fashion before being sent on to their next goal within the UEG planet of Andasia. Sadly, however, when they got to Andasia to wipe out the rebels who had also risen up there, during this battle morale became low with some of the ODSC soldiers as the fighting became extremely intense. After the first fight, one ODST in particular named Ridge was killed in battle, ruining the morale of his close friend and fellow ODST, 
18 year old Kadmon Lasky. As the fighting continued within Andesia, eventually the whole of this ODST battalion would be wiped out with their remains unable to be located. Thomas Lasky, the brother of Kadmon, was distraught by this news as he was told it was best he remained in school instead of attending his brother's funeral. But with the loss of all of these troopers, this grief did inspire Lasky in particular, as he went on to graduate from his school with honours and become the incredible commander, now captain of the ship, the UNSC Infinity. But as the ODSTs continued on fighting in their war against the insurrectionists, a new threat suddenly emerged with hatred and suddenly the UNSC had to up their efforts, plunging the ODSTs into actual hell to try and save them from total extinction. The date was the 1st of November 2525 and humanity suddenly encountered the alien collective known as the Covenant, who without any warning invaded the UNSC planet of Harvest and wiped out anyone in their way. With this new threat clearly being higher in priority than the insurrectionists they had been fighting previously, the ODST's goals were now changed to match the new war they faced. In 2526, the ODSTs were sent to face the Covenant face to face as they invaded the Kobula Academy of Military Science on the planet of Circunius IV. The troopers were dropped directly on the campus to help the Marines already place there, secure it, and take it back from the overwhelming Covenant forces. Thomas Lasky watched as the ODSTs plunged into the dark ruins of their school and immediately tried to face up against the huge camouflaged elites, but most of the time they were overwhelmed by their devastating strength. By the time the Spartan IIs of John 117, Kelly 087, and Frederick 104 were deployed, all of the Marines, students, Bar 4 and ODST squadrons were completely slaughtered. One of their first face-to-face -face encounters with the Covenant was a total disaster as the troopers now realized what they were truly fighting against. This event was quickly followed by the Battle of Hatiai, which was also one of the first deployments of the ODSTs against the Covenant. Like many of these stories, the Covenant completely overwhelmed all of the UNSC ground forces thanks to their technological prowess. The ODSTs tried desperately to save the planet and hit back, but it was no good as the planet was lost in the conflict. But luckily for the ODSTs involved in this battle, they were able to extract before the UNSC completely retreated. Yet another lost battle to their name as morale was getting lower by the day. Over on Harvest, the first planet to be hit by the Covenant, some squadrons of ODSTs participated in the Battle of Arcadia as they assisted Marines and the Spartan IIs of Red Team defending the capital city from the Covenant ground forces. This defense using all of the best UNSC soldiers allowed allowed the civilians of Arcadia to escape and to get away safely from the complete destruction of humanity's colonies. The overall battle was a huge success for the UNSC and with the help of the ODSTs, they were now able to prevent the Covenant from taking the main city and command attacks on several Covenant bases, enabling them to reclaim their fallen planet. Several ODST platoons during this joined the UNSC Spirit of Fire's rescue operation after retaking the planet and with their efforts participated in the Battle of Etron Harborage, a significant event within the Human Covenant War that proved humanity were not out of the fight yet and could devastate the Covenant when they put their mind to it, killing one of their highest ranking elites, the Arbiter, in the process. By the year 2535, a new directive was put in place named the Cole Protocol, which was to make sure that no ship in the UNSC could give information regarding important human colonies over to the Covenant. This directive would instruct those in charge of their vessel to force an emergency evacuation self-destruct and wipe all of their data mattresses to make sure nothing could be salvaged. With this doctorate now in service, the ODSTs were deployed to commercial and private vessels to purge their navigational databases, to once again make sure the Covenant could not access anything. But although this seemed like an easy task, during one routine taking the ship the UNSC Midsummer Night was following, the Finnegan's Wake, these ODSTs were captured and taken to the rubble. Despite their battle with the Covenant, the insurrectionists were still active active, and it was them who had ambushed the troopers, killing a few of them in the process. Eventually, thanks to the efforts of Lieutenant Jacob Keyes, the ODSTs were able to escape the freighter safely and stop the Finnegan Wake from self-destructing and taking out not only them, but also the UNSC Midsummer Night in the process. Continuing on within the rubble, the ODSTs as well as the Spartan Grey team were able to secure a victory as they would go on to defeat the Kigyar who had tricked the rebel human inhabitants into telling them the location of Earth. 
The Human Covenant War continued on for decades, and the ODST played a vital role in a vast array of important battles for the UNSC. These included the Battle of Jericho 4, in which sadly the members of the 105th Drop Jet Platoon were slaughtered by a massive force of Ungoy. There was also a Sanchayum assassination mission on Haiyan that saw the ODST trooper O'Brien take out their target with a single shot from over two miles away, as well as the Battle of Skopje, Battle of Sigma Octanius 4, Battle of New Jerusalem, the Battle of Tribute, and the Battle of Ariel. All of these events saw moments of heroism for the ODSTs that were sent into battle. However, whilst these events were significant for the overall war effort, all of them pale in comparison from the events of the Fall of Reach in 2552. As the Covenant first discovered the UNSC stronghold of Reach, the UNSC immediately jumped into action to defend it, because if Reach fell, Earth was next. The ODSTs were sent in their masses and found themselves fighting the Battle of Veri, assisting the main Marine and Spartan forces trying desperately to repel the Covenant from the planet. The UNSC threw everything at the Covenant, hitting significant targets in their journey and wiping out important vessels. But eventually it was no good. The Covenant were too much and Reach had to be evacuated. As evacuations took place, one UNSC ship, the Pillar of Autumn, made a blind slip space jump away from the system with a significant AI package, which in the right hands could help win the war. As they exited their jump, they would go on to find the mysterious abandoned installation called Installation 04, or simply, Halo. As the UNSC abandoned the Pillar of Autumn and ventured over the Halo to discover what was going on and escape the Covenant clutches, some ODST shock troopers led by Major Antonio Silva and First Lieutenant Melissa McKay operated as a guerrilla force and conducted a hit and run operation against the fleet of particular justice, the main Covenant fleet who had followed the Pillar of Autumn to the installation. As the Battle of Installation 04 neared its end, only one ODST, Corporal Locklear, was was able to survive, who with a few others including Staff Sergeant Avery Johnson were able to flee the installation in the Pelican. After their ODSTs were able to destroy the flood infested Covenant cruiser, the Truth and Reconciliation. His comrades along with all the other UNSC staff however were either wiped out by the Covenant, infected by the terrifying flood or destroyed when the ring was obliterated. By the chief. But with these small survivors, it was now time for the biggest battle, the battle for Earth. The initial battle for Earth, however, was completely unpredicted and was unlike anything the Covenant had done before. As the UNSC forces gathered in the orbit of Earth, a small Covenant fleet led by the Prophet of Regret jumped into their solar system and immediately started to invade the UNSC's defense platforms. ODST combat teams were sent to the front lines to defend their stations, with most of them being on the Cairo, Athens, and the Malta. The ODST ODST held off for the most part but eventually were overrun and were sadly wiped out as the Malta and Athens were destroyed by Covenant bombs. But as the Prophet of Regret's main carrier placed itself over the African city of Mombasa, teams of ODSTs were deployed all over the city from orbit in an attempt to board the carrier and take out the Prophet. But before they could land, the carrier jumped into slip space, causing a devastating explosive force all over the city, sending many of the ODST drop pods completely off course. Isolated isolating them from the rest of their squads. Because of this, only one ODST squad was able to survive the landing within the city, and as they all linked up once again, were able to carry out their secret mission run by their captain Veronica Dare, and gather the data of the superintendent. With the Prophet now on the run after a disastrous invasion of Earth, one UNSC ship in amber clad followed them to another Halo ring, Installation 05, and with Sergeant Avery Johnson and Master Chief, the 7th Shock Troops Battalion of ODSTs would drop from orbit into the installation to try and find and capture the Prophet of Regret. Sadly, like with the Battle of Installation 04, many of the ODSTs deployed for this operation would be wiped out in firefights on the ring, with only a few escaping back to Earth with Commander Miranda Keys to once again defend Earth from the upcoming larger Covenant invasion. By this point, it was clear that all UNSC forces had to be solely focused on the defense of Earth, and because of it, this was the largest deployment of ODST 
forest he's ever seen before. The whole globe was taken over by fighting as the Covenant obliterated cities in North America, South America, Europe and Asia, as well as taking out other important parts within the Sol system. By November 17th, 2552, almost all of the orbital defense grid was overwhelmed by the profit of Truce's massive Covenant army, as well as the forces on the ground being overwhelmed by their presence. During this time, an operation went ahead with two ODST soldiers, T. Ryman and S. Hartley, Bravo 2-1 and Bravo 2-2, who were tasked with calculating the crash site of the legendary Spartan John 117. This task was extremely difficult as the ODSTs, along with a few Marines, were tasked with defending a narrow corridor between Covenant and UNSC forces in Pakistan. The brutes attacking them were terrifyingly powerful, but after numerous Marines were killed within the clash along with Bravo 2-1, Bravo 2-2 as well as a few Marines were able to survive and with it were able to successfully track and locate the Master Chief. As the Battle of Earth reached its climax, the portal to the Ark opened up and with it the UNSC and Covenant entered and fought for control of the Ark. The 11th Marine Force Reconnaissance along with the remaining ODSTs on the UNSC Forward Unto Dawn fought bravely alongside the Master Chief on the Ark during Operation Blind Faith, making some of these men and women the first modern humans to travel outside of the Milky Way galaxy. The ODSTs were fundamental for the success of the Human Covenant War and its ending, as they were able to drop into the Covenant territory and take out vital AA guns, allowing the Forward Unto Dawn to get into strategic areas. They were also able to be dropped into combat during the last fight against the Covenant, allowing them to punch holes in the Covenant armor and allow Master Chief and the Arbiter to get to the Prophet of Truth and kill him then and there. Humanity had now won the Human Covenant War, as their prophets had been silenced, and now that the Ark was theirs, the surviving ODSTs were taken back to Earth aboard the Sangheili flagship, the Shadow of Intent, as they all went on to honor the ones they had lost over the course of the long, devastating war. For many of the surviving ODSTs who were part of the war, they would go on to retire from their duties and go on to live their peaceful lives. For many of the other veterans, however, they would go on to be recruited into the Spartan 4 program, enhancing their armor as well as letting them access further advanced training. Some regular ODSTs did remain, however, within the military unit of the 3rd Helljumper Platoon, taking part in the Battle of Dratheus V against the newly reformed Covenant under the rule of Merg Vol in 2554. By the latter half of the 2550s, the ODSTs were still in force, albeit much smaller than before, and technically labelled as Spartan 4s, with a squad called Alpha 9 getting involved in a mission over on the moon of Talitza. The mission was led by the veteran ODST of Edward Buck, and was tasked in rescuing a captured engineer with their human handler, Endesha, from the clutches of the new United Rebel Front. The mission was ultimately a success, and helped Buck gain a name for himself as a brilliant soldier and leader. Other ODSTs were seen aboard the UNSC Spirit of Fire as it approached the Ark after a few years adrift. These ODSTs would be the 9th Shock Troops Battalion, and as the ship scouted the Ark, would come into battle against the new deadly force of the Banished in what would be the second Ark conflict in the spring of 2559. One ODST squadron known as Sunray 1-1 were able to prevent the Banished forces led by the Letgolo Worms known as Colony from gaining overall control of the Forerunner Despair class fighter, which they would use against the UNSC Spirit of Fire, and on top of that would continue to fight the banished forces within the areas of the installation, wiping out vital assets of the banished commanders. To this date, the ODSTs are still out there in full operation. However, most of them are now under the title of Spartan Force. As the UNSC escaped the clutches of Cortana's created, they would go under fire from Aatrox's forces of the banished once again, and as they took the ship, ODSTs on on board are said to have been seen fighting them off. Whether they survived the conflict is something that is currently unknown, and if they did, their whereabouts is also unknown. But hopefully as time progresses on within the years of 2560 and beyond, the ODST can be used to great effect, plunging into hell itself and taking out the banished forces to prevent their extinction once again. But with all that said, it's safe to say that whilst the ODSTs were never on the same playing field as the Spartan 2s or 3s, their involvement 
involvement within the Covenant War was fundamental for their overall victory. Without these brave, fearless individuals, humanity might never have been able to gather vital intel or defend important infrastructures, and because of that would probably have perished even faster. The ODSTs are some of humanity's finest warriors who would fight in some of the most terrifying areas against foes that could wipe them out within a single strike. But with their teamwork and their, let's be honest, extremely cool armor, were able to come together to give humanity that hope that one day they would go back to the way things used to be without an alien collective trying to wipe them out once and for all. Hopefully one day we will hear more of their stories, but for now, this has been the lore behind the fearless hell jumpers known as the Orbital Drop Shot Troopers, the ODST. And that is the known lore behind the awesome soldiers known as the ODST who will plummet to the ground from orbit right into the heart of battle. Do let me know what you think of the ODSTs, would you like to see more games with them in, or were you not bothered by them as troopers? I hope you all enjoyed this video and would like to see more within this universe, and if you do, let me know what topics you'd like to see. If you were entertained by this, make sure you give it a like, leave a nice comment, check out my other lore playlists, and subscribe if you haven't already. And if you love this content, why not consider supporting me on on Patreon or as a YouTube channel member for early ad-free access to these videos as well as being able to pick up some exclusive merch like this mug and hoodie. And speaking of supporters, I'd like to thank mine real quick. Big thanks to our small fish guys, our big fishes Christopher, Andrew, AVP Man, Last Persona User and Arto Krem, our Shark, Wow Search Gaming, our Megalodons, Sinus, Jacob Garcia and Chernobyl Stalker and our absolutely legendary Sarfish, Shadow SGT. Also big shout out to our YouTube channel members, our wise ones, Jam and fiery Italian. All of your support means the world to me and means I can make these videos for you guys, so thank you all so, so much. But that is all for now. Thanks again for watching. Sorry if I sound so bad. I'm still recovering from COVID, but hopefully I'll sound better for the next one and I shall see you there. Cheers. <laughs>